Good morning or good afternoon to you wherever you're watching this anywhere in the world. This is my umpire's guide to judging LBW decisions in cricket. So firstly, let's look at the fundamentals of the LBW law as they're written in the MCC laws of cricket. Firstly, the bowler delivers a ball not being a no ball. No batter can be given out LBW to a no ball. Point number two, the ball, if it is not intercepted full pitch, pitches in line between wicket and wicket on the, or on the offside of the striker's wicket. If the ball pitches outside the leg side of the striker's wicket, that cannot be given out LBW according to the laws of cricket. The ball, not having previously dutched his or her bat, the striker intercepts the ball either full pitch or after pitching with any part of his or her person, and that would normally be the leg. Point four, the point of impact, even if above the level of the bales, either is between wicket and wicket, or if the striker has made no genuine attempt to play the ball with the bat, is between wicket and wicket or outside the line of the off stump. The important phrase here is that a batter playing a stroke at the ball may not be given out if he struck outside the line of the off stump. Point number five and finally, but for the interception, the ball would have hit the wicket. So let's look at the two most important points to consider when you're judging an LBW decision. Number one is the point where the ball pitches, where it lands on the surface of the wicket. And point number two, the point where the ball impacts the striker. Your view of these points may depend on the angle at which the ball is being bowled and the stance of the striker. So let's look at something a little bit to do with physics. It's very important when judging LBW decisions, and that is parallax. Parallax will cause an object to appear to be in different places when viewed along different lines of sight. So let's look at this diagram here with the red line and the green line. The red line is the ball, act, the ball's actual trajectory, and the green line is the view of that ball from the position of a fielder at mid-off. So the ball pitching is shown where that red dot is might appear to be in line with the stumps from the position of the field at mid off, but it is outside the line of the stumps from the position of view of the umpire. This is why you should always trust the judgment of the umpire's line of sight rather than relying on the volume of appeals from the fielders. The fielder at mid off may be appealing very loudly, certain that the batter has been struck in line in front of the stumps, whereas in fact, from the umpire's viewpoint, the batter has been struck outside the line. Something to test about yourself, whether are you, you are right eye dominant or left eye dominant, and this can be done with a simple finger test at home or outside. Your dominant side will be more accurate in determining ball position. We'll get into that in a minute. But first, we'll start with the finger test and how you do it. You start with both of your eyes open. You then place your finger out at arm's length in line with some distant object, like a tree, in this case, with you watching this video, and you close each eye in turn. First, I'll close my left eye, and then I'll close my right eye. Now, with one eye closed, the finger will appear to jump to one side. The eye that is closed when the finger jumps is your dominant eye. So if I put my finger out, I close my right eye, I now see that my finger appears to have jumped to the right. That means I am right eye dominant. I now know that. So let's look at how that affects your view from the umpire's position behind the stumps. Parallax can cause an apparent shift in the position of where the ball pitches based on the umpire's dominant versus non-dominant eye. So for example, in the diagram there, if the umpire is left eye dominant, the ball impacting as shown may appear to be out, whereas a right eye dominant umpire might give that delivery not out. 
parallax errors will be smaller when the ball is closer to the stumps, larger when the ball is further from the stumps, and of course, closer to you, the umpire. So let's just armed with that knowledge, look at some of the most common positions, batting and bowling configurations. And there's a lot to unpack here. So I'm going to go through this slide fairly quickly. Then I'm going to go through some of the rationale, and then we're going to come back to this slide. So a right hand bat facing a right arm bowler bowling over the wicket. This is, of course, the most common bowling and batting configuration, and it's the most likely cause for LBW or any other kind of appeal. The ball should pitch on or outside of off stump. The ball should impact striker in line with off stump or middle stump. And I'm going to start by going through these points quickly, like I said, and then we'll unpack what this is all about. It needs to impact striker on the off, off line of off stump or on the line of middle stump. If it impacts the striker on the line of leg stump, it is probably not out. If it impacts the striker outside of off stump, it may be out if the striker is not playing a stroke. So let's tackle that last point first, because this is an easy decision. Is the striker playing a stroke? The decision here is, has the striker made an attempt to hit the ball? The striker is playing a stroke if they have the bat moving in the same quadrant as the ball. The striker is playing a stroke if they have placed the pad down the pitch and they have placed the bat alongside the pad, whether the bat is moving or not, if they have put the bat out there in front of where they believe the ball is going, they are playing a stroke. A batter is not playing a stroke if they've shouldered arms. That means they've lifted the bat deliberately above their head, above one shoulder, deliberately trying to avoid the ball. That is not playing a stroke. If the batter has stepped down the pitch and has placed the bat behind the pad, that is with the pad in front and the bat behind, that is not playing a stroke. Now, are they playing a good stroke? It's not your job as the umpire to determine whether the striker is or is not playing a good stroke. Any attempt to get the bat onto the ball is a stroke. Firstly, if the strike has been hit on the pad by the ball, then by definition, that is probably not a good stroke. If it was a good stroke, they would have hit the ball. That's not part of your LBW judgment. Your role is to determine whether or not the striker intended to hit the ball. Let's have a look at a lower order batter coming in at nine or 10. They're a specialist bowler. They might have rather unorthodox stroke play. They might be swishing the bat left, right and centre. They may not get anywhere near the ball. It's not your role as the umpire to comment on the skill of the striker. The striker may have completely misjudged the ball. A lower order batter may do that quite often. But any attempt to hit the ball is playing a stroke. Let's look at, look at the ball pitch and the ball movement. And there are some things you need to take into account and some things you do not need to take into account. Firstly, take into consideration the movement of the ball off the pitch. So, for example, a right arm leg spin bowler may be able to pitch the ball on middle stump or on middle and leg and still get an LBW decision as they're straightening the ball in towards the batsman or moving the ball slightly away from the bat. Take into account the swing of the ball in the air. For example, an in-swing bowler may create enough movement through the air to trap unwary batters in front of the stumps quite frequently. However, sometimes this creates a situation where the striker is impacted in front of middle stump, but the ball will have missed leg stump, especially a bowler bowling over the wicket. That's because of the swing of the ball through the air. You do not take into account potential movement of the ball through the air after it pitches. So it may be possible for some expert bowlers to make to bowl a delivery in such a way that it moves through the air after it strikes through the pitch, swings through the air, unless you're an expert physicist with a PhD in fluid mechanics or something like that. That's not your area of expertise. 
do not take into account potential movement of the ball if the striker is impacted on the full. You may consider that a spin bowler bowling a uh, full ball and impacting the striker on the full may turn the ball after it pitches. However, the general guidelines are that you should not take that movement into account. You should assume always the ball continues on its current path. That does not mean assume the ball continues in a straight line towards the stumps. It is just continuing in a straight line on its current path. So if the ball is already swinging from the offside to the leg side, when it impacts the batter on the full, you have to assume that it will continue on its path after it strikes the batter. So now let's consider the impact of parallax, and that is judging the ball pitch versus judging the place where the ball impacts the batter. Umpires will be more accurate at judging the position the ball impacts the striker than they will judging the position that the ball pitches, especially on the side of your non-dominant eye. So myself, being a right eye dominant umpire, I am more certain of where the ball strikes the batter than I am of where the ball lands on the pitch especially on the right-hand batter's leg side, because that is the side of my dominant eye. I may make occasional parallax errors, judging the pitch of the ball on the wicket. I am less likely to make those same errors, judging the position the ball impacts the striker. If in doubt, judge in favour of the striker. So now that we've gone over those points and un unpacked a little bit of detail, let's see how this pertains to this particular batting and bowling configuration. So I've got a right arm bowler bowling over the wicket and he is bowling the ball generally in the direction of the stumps. It struck the pitch somewhere and it struck the batter somewhere on the leg, perhaps in front of the stumps. So firstly, I said that if it impacts the striker on leg stump, it is probably not out. Let's unpack that a little bit. If I've got a right arm off spin bowler, that is an orthodox spinner bowling over the wicket, and he's pitched the ball on or about off stump, or maybe just outside off stump, and the ball has turned due to the direction of his spin, and it has struck the batter in front of leg stump, I am certainly going to give that nod out because the movement of the ball after it pitches is going to carry that ball down that leg side. If I've got a right arm leg spin bowler, an unorthodox bowler, shame one type, bowling a delivery, pitching on maybe middle stump and striking the striker on or in front of leg stump or maybe middle, then I'm going to have a good hard look at that. Now, a leg spin bowler would normally be turning the ball away from the right hand batter but as many of you will know there are things like googlies and flippers that leg spin bowlers will deliver and they will straighten or perhaps turn the ball in the opposite direction if i've got a right arm leg spin bowler who has pitched the ball on what i believe outside of stump and it appears to be a googly it's moved in towards the batter and it struck the batter in front of leg, then that is probably not out. Again, it's the same as an off-spin bowl, bowling. The ball is moved too far towards the leg side and will miss leg stump. If I've got that same right arm bowler bowling a flipper and it's landed on or around middle stump and it has struck the batter on or in front of leg stump, then I'm going to have a good hard think about that. If it's kind of middle and leg, I'm probably going to give that out again i've got to think about height um, but flippers as we often know often quick keep quite low and may in fact have struck the batter in front of leg stump on the back leg low just above the ankle so in that case i'm probably going to give that out a flipper may in fact just go straight on and if it's pitched on middle and then continues in a straight line towards leg stump, looks like it's striking leg, I'm probably going to give that out. Again, this is all without the 
uh, benefit of overhead TV cameras and uh, upstairs reviews and that sort of stuff. Again, if I've got a situation where I've got perhaps a right arm uh, orthodox bowler bowling um, a delivery that pitches outside off stump and then moves in slightly and the batter has stepped outside off stump and with no intention to play a stroke, put the pad out to the bat, but I believe the ball has turned in sufficiently to strike the stumps. Then if I'm convinced the striker is not playing a stroke, I'm going to have a good hard think about whether to give that out LBW. Let's reverse that configuration. I've now got a left-hand batter facing a left-arm over bowler, that is a left-hand left-arm bowler bowling over the wicket. And I have exactly the same situation as I previously had. So you can replay this video, go back a few slides and look at your the previous discussion. I've now obviously got the left arm orthodox versus the left arm off spinner uh, debate to have about how far or where the ball is turning. And I also know that my dominant eye is now reversed. So me as a right I dominant umpire, I am now more certain of the pitch of the ball with this configuration because it is on my dominant eye side than I would have been about the position of the ball on the pitch on the other configuration, right hand bat, right arm bowler bowling over. Now let's go to around the wicket. And I have to say that in my experience, bowlers bowling round the wicket really take LBW wickets. But let's unpack some of that again. Firstly, if I've got a right-hand batter facing a right-arm bowler bowling around the wicket. In this case, if I'm going to consider an LBW decision, the ball should pitch in line with leg stump or it should pitch in line with middle stump. If I've got a bowler bowling on that angle and if the ball pitches in line with off stump, that is probably not out. If the ball is pitching outside of leg, that is definitely not out because accordance with the laws of cricket, you may not give a batter out if the ball has pitched outside of leg stump. The ball should impact striker in line with middle stump. If the ball impacts the striker in line with off stump, again, due to the position of the bowler's hand being further from the stumps, it is probably moving too far down the offside and will miss off stump. If the ball has pitched in line with leg stump and it has impacted the striker in line with leg stump, then you have a dilemma. In this case, I would say this is probably not out. And the reason why it is not out is because you may have misjudged the position where the ball has pitched. It is much more likely that you have made a parallax error on the position of the ball pitching and the ball has in fact pitched outside of leg stump when you think it's patched in line with leg stump if it then continues on its line and impacts the striker in line with leg stump. So in this case, I believe you have to give the batter the benefit of the doubt and say that is not out. This is, as a little bit of fact, you can go and uh, fossick through the various statistics databases, and I don't want to breach anyone's copyright by naming those, but I think many of you know where they are. The this is the most common cause of incorrect LBW decisions in international cricket. That is where we have statistics on the number of LBW decisions that are overturned by the third umpire. The most common situation where those decisions are overturned is with a right-hand batter facing a right-arm bowler bowling around the wicket. It is also one of the most common causes of excessive appeals, which are often given not out because the ball's pitched outside leg. Remember the mantra, if in doubt, it's not out. Probably the only type of bowlers that can regularly take wickets LBW this way are the right arm orthodox spin bowlers, that is the right arm off spin bowlers. 
Now, I'm not going to then put up another slide of left hand batter, left arm bowler bowling around the wicket. It is exactly the reverse of this situation. So again, only the left arm orthodox spin bowlers, that is the left arm leg spinners, are going to regularly take wickets in that configuration. Now let's switch to a left hand, right hand combination. And in this case, we've got a right hand batter facing a left arm bowler bowling around the wicket. Again, a fairly common configuration. I think most left arm bowlers would prefer to bowl over the wicket to a right hand batter. For you to consider this to be out, the ball should pitch in line with leg or with middle stump. If the ball pitches in line with off stump, we can refer to the previous slide, it is probably not out, it is missing off. If the ball pitches outside of leg stump, it is definitely not out. The laws of cricket does not allow you to give that batter out if the ball pitches outside leg stump. The ball needs to impact striker in line with middle stump, exactly as per the previous slide. If the ball impacts striker in line with off, for the reasons I gave earlier, that is also probably not out. Also for the reasons that I discussed in the previous slide, if the ball impacts the striker in line with leg stump and is pitched in line with leg stump, then your judgment of where the ball has pitched may be incorrect. However, this is actually more likely to be out LBW than a right hand batter bowling right hand, facing a right hand bowler bowling around the wicket this is actually a more common configuration. This is a left hand batter facing a right arm bowler bowling over the wicket is exactly the reverse of this configuration. So you may just reread this slide and swap left to right and everything is exactly the same. This is an interesting statistical piece is the most common cause of LBW reviews that are struck down by the third umpire. That is, the batter has reviewed an LBW decision, the batter has been given out on the field, the batter has reviewed that the third umpire takes a look and strikes down the review and confirms the decision of the on-field umpire. This is often due to a parallax error or a bit of head movement on the part of the striker. And then let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Let's just say in this case, the right hand batter is facing a left arm bowler bowling over the wicket. The batter believes that he or she is not out because the ball pitched outside of leg stump. The reason they believe that is the position of the batter's eye creates a parallax error where the ball appears to pitch outside of leg, whereas in fact it has pitched in line with leg and is in fact out. This is often caused by the batter's head falling forwards as they prepare to play a stroke. Now you might have a batter in your face saying, look, I'm a perfect batter. My, never, my head never falls forwards. I absolutely know that pitched outside of leg stump. It should be given not out. So let's look at a batter who had that problem with their head falling forwards. That batter's name was Virat Kohli. Barak Coley had this problem with his head falling forwards as he played the stroke. He had coaching to correct that problem. If the batter on the field arguing in my face can demonstrate that they are a better player than Virat Coley, then I'm prepared to listen to their argument about where the ball pitched in no other circumstance. Now let's change this around to a right-hand bat and a left arm bowler bowling around the wicket. So we've now got a right hand, left hand configuration with the bowler bowling around the wicket. In this case, the ball needs to pitch in line with off or outside of off if you're going to consider this to be out. The ball needs to impact the striker in line with off or in line with middle stump. Again, due to the angle of the ball, if the ball impacts the striker in line with leg stump, that is probably not out. If the ball pitches outside of off and impacts in strike with line in line with middle, that is also probably not out, simply because the amount at which the ball would have had to have moved to go from outside off to middle stump. And again, take into consideration swing and pitch and movement of the pitch, 
a left arm orthodox spinner may straighten the ball as it pitches. That is a left arm leg spinner may straighten the ball as it pitches, possibly pitching in line with middle and impacting in line with middle. And that is a strong case for giving the batter out LBW. If the bowler is a fast bowler, a seamer, then the striker is less likely to be out LBW if the impact is in front of middle stump due to the angle of the ball, unless the impact is very close to the stumps on the back leg. Trust your judgment of where the ball impacts the striker. It is much more likely to be accurate than your judgment of where the ball pitches. Remember the mantra, if in doubt, it's not out. Again, a left-hand batter facing a right-arm bowler bowling around the wicket is exactly the reverse of this. And again, the orthodox spin comes into play here. The right-arm orthodox spin bowler, the off-spinner, will be straightening the ball as it pitches and may have a stronger case for taking wickets in that configuration than a right-arm pace bowler or a right-arm unorthodox leg spin bowler. Summary. All of these points are very, very good. These are made from my experience, some simple mathematics and understanding of the rules. But in the end, it is the umpire's judgment, your judgment as an umpire, as to whether the batter is out or not out, based on your own personal experience and many other factors. Ball height, bounce, local knowledge of the pitch, ball trajectory. I happen to know that in our local playing conditions, the pitch sometimes keeps low and that gets more and more, that the pitch gets lower and lower as the ball wears throughout the course of the game. However, your knowledge of your local pitch may be very different to my knowledge of my local pitch and therefore judging the ball height may be something you need to take into account based on your local playing conditions and I have avoided discussion of ball height for that reason. It's very very difficult to generalize ball height without knowing the behavior of the actual pitch playing pitch involved. Hopefully this gives you some basic rules to add to your experience and local knowledge about your local playing conditions. Let's look at the role of the umpire before we wrap up. We the umpires are there to officiate the game for the benefit of the players and the spectators. We're not there to play. We're not there to watch. What do the players and spectators want out of a game of cricket and out of you as the umpire? They want consistency. They want fairness. They want impartiality. You must judge the same ball the same way each and every single time. They want a competition that's decided on the last day of the competition in the final by the skill of the players on the field. They do not want a game that is decided by incorrect or inconsistent umpiring decisions. Overall, be consistent. Be aware of the laws of cricket. The players are frequently not aware of the laws of cricket. Be aware of possible viewpoint and parallax errors and take that into account in your judgment of LBW decisions on the field. Judge the same ball the same way each and every time. If a batter is struck right in front of middle, low on the ankle, maybe on the back leg, and I'm considering giving that out, I either give it out every time or not every time. I don't let my personal feelings interfere with that decision-making process. To wrap up, copyright. You may copy this training, you may adapt it to your own league, you may use it directly from wherever you find it on the internet, you may point your league players and umpires at this training, you may re-record it, you may do your own voiceover, I will make the source material available. The laws of cricket are copyright by the Marleybone Cricket Club. You may go to the Marleybone Cricket Club and download a copy for your own use, for your league's use, you may not alter those laws you may not republish altered versions of those laws thank you very much and enjoy the game